Um, what's going on, man? Yeah. 15, 20 records. What's up? For real, for real. How did you grow up? Because me actually knowing you, um, I know that you, you like between New York and also like DMV area. So I, I grew up in, um, I was born in New York. And um, I lived here until I was like, say, 11. Moved down to Virginia for a couple years. Came back at like 14. Um, stayed here till I was 16. Then finished, stayed here till I was 16, turned to 17. And I finished my last two years in high school out in Virginia. Okay. Um, yeah. So you, yeah, like you're a New York guy? Or you, you're nah, a I mean, I, I, like, I, I love the DMV. DMV is like, you know, part of the, part you know, raised me. I think also the DMV played a heavy tie into, um, you know, I think my, my approach to music because I think a lot of people get centralized and like they get caught into the idea of either what's hot on the radio or not just what's hot on the radio, but what's happening in a city. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, so I feel like that's why I'm a little bit more inclined to like reach out and try different stuff with my music because I don't want to just sound like what's going on around me. I want to like, you know, either create my own sound, tap into what's going on around me, but also understand that everybody doesn't, everybody in, everybody in the world doesn't just listen to the music that's playing on the radio in New York, you know? I hear you. So going back, like when did you really first get like introduced to hip hop? Cause some people like, you know, New York, Virginia, it might have been Virginia, it might have been New York. Nah, been I was, I've been, but, no. I've been, I've been really into the music thing since I was real little. Like, I'm talking about like three. My moms used to have me perform for my family at like family gatherings. You remember getting your first like Boos and Highs? Absolutely. Okay. I used to perform songs like when I'm, I'm talking about like four years old, my moms used to have me perform at family gatherings for family. And my, like on my grandmother's side. Dance battle. So I was really always into music, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and my cousins used to dance battle at family gatherings, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of that. So I've always been rapping. Like, in, well, into rapping. I started rapping in, like, the fifth grade. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you exactly how it happened. First round book I ever got, I was in the fifth grade. And it was this kid in my class. Me and him still cool. This kid in my class, he started rapping. He started rapping something while we were waiting to go to lunch. And all the girls started bugging out. They started bugging out. Like, oh, he can rap. I'm like, I can rap better than him. Literally, right after that, I had a blank book. I started writing raps in it. I got in trouble that same day because I was writing mad curse words in that rap book. Teacher found a rap book. I had mad curse words in there. Just got grade. wild up. Fifth yeah, grade. Yeah. My mom's wild me out. But then, other than that, after that, I just kept rapping. Skipping all the way from then to now, I was looking at your Instagram, I see you with pictures with Drake, Chris Brown, is it true you broke up that, I mean like you helped fall off that beat? Yeah, it was me. Um, I called I call Chris, I was like, yo look man, yo the light skin mafia don't need this. <laughs> and I'm saying this from a brown skin onlooker, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was like, yo, the way the way y'all two right here, y'all niggas is the, y'all the top dog when it comes to this light skin shit. You know what I'm saying top dogs, so I was like, yo, y'all niggas need to get that together. You know what I mean, all y'all need is a little bit of guidance, cause right now it's looking like y'all have no guidance. And, and then Chris point. Brown was like, no guidance, and I was like, yo, truth be told, hold on, let me call Drake on three way, three way Drake, and I was like, yo, Drake, look, he was like, yeah, I was like, yo, Drake, um, right now y'all just need a little bit of guidance from the Browns community, and um. They was like, guys, that sounds great. That sounds like a, a great song that we can make a lot of money off of. Yeah, Drake. And I was like, yeah, word, facts. Y'all should definitely do that. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to write it up real quick, and I'm going to send you out to the studio. I'm going to book the studio session myself. Get y'all in there. Y'all bring light-skinned niggas back. Y'all ain't had top dogs since LL. I'm going to bring y'all back. With this one right here, I don't even want no credit, but now this is my first time speaking on it, so yeah. But um, all jokes aside, how was that just doing that at, you know, 15, 20, everybody going at Chris, like, you know, performing Chris Brown house? Nah, that was an experience. Yeah. Um, it was definitely an experience. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I got, a, you know, got to bring a couple people with me. Um, because, you know, first off, Chris Brown, my favorite artist of all time. So, 
you know, getting to experience that, you know, getting to experience that moment with a couple people that, you know, my brothers, I mean, Mike, Mike from 1520, him popping out, you know what I mean, getting to be able to bring my people to that kind of situation, you know what I mean, in those kind of settings is literally the only, like, one of the main reasons I do this, you know what I'm saying, to show people around me a different light, you know what I mean, so that was definitely a dope experience, for real, for real, I'm gonna be completely honest. Expand on that, I heard you mention, um, and you heard you mention Mike, how did you end up getting signed on 1520 Records? All right, so, um, a minute ago, uh, like, I always knew, you know, Mike and him was into, uh, um, Mike and Andy was into real estate or whatever, and he, you know, I've been always talking to them about, um, well, not just them, but, like, you know, they, they've been listening to my, they've been hearing my music for a while, seeing me do the music thing, and um, one day me and Mike linked up, and he was like, yo, man, I'm really looking to, like, you know, invest into this music thing. I want to, like, I think this is something we could really do, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got the talent for it, and I was like, yo, let's link up, we can talk it up, chop it up, figure out what we're going to do. And, um, you know, me and Mike, we've been friends since we was, like, 11 years old. <clears throat> So from that point on, like, you know, we already had that type of friendship relationship. So from us having that conversation, you know, we really just put the plan to action. And um, that's how we started it up. First song, one of the first songs we did, Love the City, Jump. You know what I mean? Like, I think just, you know, us being, you know, us growing up and him seeing what I'm doing with this and, like, you know, how long I've been doing this, I think, you know, that's kind of what kind of engaged him into you know, I guess like talking to Andy about it, getting Andy on board, and then, you know, we here today. That's fine, that's fine, man. Um, what's your creative process like as far as making music? Are you somebody who do you make music in the studio? Do you write and then pull up to the studio? Or, you know, My creative process used to be, it, it changed. Because when I had moved back to New York, um, me and my homie B. Will, he produced most of Revenge. Um, he, we used to be in the studios, like interning. So, and he was interning as an engineer. I was just there helping. And like, whenever right before the sessions would come, like you know, main artists would come in there to do their sessions. We would have a certain amount of time to get songs done. Mm -hmm. So, from that process, it became a, yo, make sure you got your raps done and memorized before you walk in here, because we ain't got a lot of time to be. Oh, let me do that over. Let me do that over. So my process got, I got more comfortable with the idea of writing and making sure I got everything pretty much done before I get to the studio. Because I feel like wasting time in the studio is like just, you in there paying for your sessions. Like I used to see artists that sign the major deals literally not even show up to their studio sessions. They have the, they label a book out an eight hour session for them or a 12 hour block. And you'll look on their Instagram, they chilling in their hotel. Whole time me and, be well in the studio we using up their time mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like the, they label already paid for it but they not in the studio so i learned from that process seeing how they wasted time and seeing where a lot of them ended up because you'll see a lot of different people like they used to come to the studio you'll see the difference you'll see how their work ethic in the studio was to where they were successfully you know what i'm saying like how they were successful like uh it's a perfect example mac miller mac miller used to get like when I used to go to the studio and I see if, like Mac Miller just saw it. He was the first person I seen like this. He had a 12 hour session and he was in there from sun up to sundown and then working the whole time. But you see where his career was, you know what I'm saying? And there's a couple other artists that I didn't seen that was signing major deals. They had their little buzz or whatever. I see how they was in the studio. They had come in there, just chill with their homies, chill with girls or whatever, leave out of the studio. You see where their career went, you know what I'm saying? Like, but this is just me knowing who they are and seeing where their career went. So that uh, kind of like conditioned me to make sure when I go in the studio to make sure I have stuff done already, mm -hmm. so I don't waste no time. Even if I don't get as much done as I want, I know I'm gonna leave out of there with a good enough amount of stuff. You know what I mean? So, kind of staying on the creative process thing. Um, there's a there's like a what you call almost like a stigma like people who come from battle rap, like, they not able to make, like, song songs. What do you, so this is a two-part question. First, what do you think about that, and how is it that you able to, how is it that, like, your music, you wouldn't, you could, it has nothing to do with battle rap, like, you definitely don't fit into that stigma, like, you know what I'm saying, as far as your songs, like, 
you know, it doesn't, you know what I'm trying to say? Like I know what you mean, I know what you mean. You, you make songs like a, um, like a artist. <clears throat> I think that stigma came from, um, all right, battle rap was centralized in New York, like at one point in time, like the, like it was kind of a, a, a East Coast, North, you know, East Coast kind of thing. So when guys were like, that's what you used to have to do to get deals, to battle a bunch of people, you know what I'm saying? So that type of rap was the thing, you know what I'm saying? Like that type of rap, being aggressive rap, you know what I'm saying? Just making sure you're saying the craziest punchlines. It wasn't really melodic. So being melodic is really what rap is now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, having a good melody, good hook and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Even if you're still rapping good, you still got to have a good melody to it. Like, you got to have a good bop to it. So I think that just came with the changing evolution of where, you know, where rap was and where rap is now. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people refuse to change. You know what I'm saying? You're not like, and that's okay, like, because their audience already like what they like from them. So you don't have, to, sometimes you don't have to change because you already got your solid audience. But those are the guys that didn't want to change. Me, I just always try to stay in tune with what's going on, um, try to keep my sound fresh. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like to conform to just one sound. You know what I mean? I want people to, I want everybody to be able to enjoy my music. You know what I mean? And I, that goes back to where I would say, like, from, living in Virginia, understanding that the world just didn't revolve around New York music no more. Like, it was songs that I would be out here like, like I was out there when Chicken Noodle Soup got hot. Mm -hmm. That didn't become a, a thing out there for like almost a year or some change mm -hmm. after it got hot. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? And I'm out there doing my, like, you know what I mean? I'm out here coming back to Virginia and I'm doing my dance and everything and everybody looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, that kind of, that kind of conditioned me to understand the world didn't revolve around New York rap anymore. You know what I'm saying? Back when 50 Cent was him, like when the South started taking over, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of changed my outlook on music. Like don't just be one sound and try to always keep your ear to the streets on what's going on and what people like to hear right now because it's nothing you can do. If the masses want to hear it, the masses want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're going to create a whole new wave, which I tend to, or a new sound, you got to keep your head in the streets and understand what kind of sounds people want to hear. So that's my, that's my way of, that's my creative process. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as staying away from the stigma of battle rappers can't make music because I don't want to, I'm not trying to sound like a battle rapper on, on wax. Battle rappers that get up there, I'm not gonna say every last one of them because I think the world, I think battle rap is evolving. Like, but a lot of battle rappers that get on wax, it sound like how they sound when they get on stage and they battle with somebody. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. You will hear me battle and then you will hear a song of mine and it don't even sound like the same person. Speaking of that, so like, you know, with you making music, doing music for a little while, um, getting more notoriety. You know, fame and money is kind of what everybody knows is going to come out of, you know, it's, it's kind of what they want and what's going to come out of your career. So, you know, you're already, um, you know, you're already part of a company, 1520 Records. And most people kind of feel the same about the money. Like, nobody has a problem with the money. But with the fame, is, is it weird? Like, how does it make you feel sometimes you're in the street and, and people... music, making good music, you know, there's a lot of things that come with it. Fame and money is two things that everybody pretty much know, you know, it's what they kind of want out of it or they know it's going to come out of it. Everybody feels probably positively about, you know, the money. But with fame, sometimes you hear like rappers be like, oh, fuck the fame, I'll take the money or whatever. So I know, um, you know, sometimes people might stop you in the street and it's like, oh, Lou Castro, and I know you got fans in other countries and shit, places that you haven't been yet. Like, how does that make you feel? Is it more of a negative? Is it weird? Is it not negative? Is it weird? Or, you know, how does that make you feel? That used to be it. That, you, you know, I really sat back and thought about that, too. Like, as I got older, I stopped really caring about that fame part of it. Like, when I was younger, like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't make it when I was, like, 16, 17. Because stuff like that will go to your head, you know what I'm saying? When you're younger... And like you just you're so used to the, the world just revolving around you, 
you're not knowing what it is to where you're not the, always the center of attention. So when you're younger, I can understand why like people really want fame. You know what I'm saying? But as I got older, sometimes you just really like want to just make money doing the thing you like to do. You know what I'm saying? That's where it comes from. You know what I'm saying? To me, like, of course, if the, you know, being known for something is always a good feeling. You know what I'm saying? You being out, somebody stopping you, saying, "Yo, oh shit, you such and such, you look at so That's that's like one of the greatest feelings ever. It's like crazy. Damn, you really know who I am, like, for real? And you excited to see me? That's fire. You know what I'm saying? But I could see how certain things like that will go to someone's head. You know what I mean? To me, now that I'm older. I would say I, I just appreciate it, but I couldn't, I, like, I, I don't think I'm a really like the idea of not having peace, you know what I mean, everywhere you go. I mean, of course, me knowing what I do and what kind of music I make, I can understand what could come with that, so I'm cool with it, but I just, I'm real, like, you know, I, I'm going to say I'm hesitant towards it, but I'm just like, man, I know what, what can come with this, because I've seen it you know, with other people, you know what I mean? People I've been around, I've been in those settings, or I've even been places where, like, I'd have to stop, like, you know, doing a big battle rap event, or I gotta stop and shake a hundred hands and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm cool on it, you know what I mean? It's not really that important to me, but I understand what comes with it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, bet. So, um, this is, like, last question, or second to last question, pretty much. If you had to go back in time, <coughs> and I know you, you know, I know you're a grateful person, thankful person, so, but if you had to go back in time and you had to change, like, one big thing, one major decision, like, the fate of the world, depending on it, if you had to go back to change that thing, you know, in order to get back to this time and whatever, if you had to, because I know a lot of people may say, oh, I won't change anything, you know, and that, you know, shows the signs of, like, a grateful and thankful person, I know that's you as well, but if you had to, like, you know, just some movie shit, we you filming blue cat, I would have so. I would have went away to college. Mm. That's one thing I would have I would change. Why? I mean, I, it's, it's why, why one or two so things. Important? I would say I wish I didn't break my leg, but <laughs> uh, like I, I wish I wish I would have went away to college. And why why you say that? Um, I didn't go away because I knew myself, and I knew I was gonna be like partying too much, but. I think, you know, that experience of being out on your own early mm -hmm. would have definitely helped me. Um, I, like I said, that, that experience of going away to college, I don't think there's anything like it. Like, from what I've seen, would it changed a lot of people that I know? You know what I mean? How they was to where they, you know, how they changed in that short period of time. Um, I think I could have used that young, you know, like at a younger age. But you know, I don't I, like any other thing. I, no, nah, I wouldn't have changed. But um, I definitely would say I would have went away to college instead of staying home and going to school, because it felt like like you staying home and going to school is like being in high school, mm -hmm. just more freedom. So that going away to college is more responsibility on yourself. You know what I mean? You get that, you know, that experience by yourself, where you don't, you're not coming home and your mom probably cooked dinner. Or it's food that your mom bought or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, you probably got, like, cup noodles and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just, you know, how it would have made you made me mature a little bit earlier. And my outlook on life, you know. You feel like it would have had it, like, you feel like it would have had an impact on your music or your career mm -hmm. and shit like that if you would have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I think it would have definitely impacted, um, I don't know. I like. I, I would have valued time a little bit more. I guess I could say that. I would have valued my time a little bit more.